Hey art nerds, today we're taking a look at the Pabio watercolor Aquel Fine. This is a 24 half pan watercolor set and I ordered this set from Wish, so keep watching. these Pabio watercolors on Wish and Pabio is an art supply company made in France. I didn't realize they made watercolors. I do know they make masking fluids so I don't know why I didn't realize they made watercolors but what I'm most experienced in seeing from Pabio would be glazing things, things for ceramics. So I was really intrigued when I saw these watercolors on Wish. On the Pabio website at en.pebeo.com it mentions that they sell half pans in 28 colors. So this is the 24 color set. We're only missing four colors um, in 24 colors and they're available open stock or you can get them in these sort of circular tins. And it's actually very difficult on the site to find exactly what they're offering. So I'm gonna do a little bit more digging, but they have a color chart and a product chart as well. So if you're actually interested in this product, I highly recommend you check out their official site. In the US, you can find Pabio products at Jerry's Artorama or through Dick Blick. You can also find this set on Amazon and Park Blogs did a review of the 12 color set. Amazon has this set for $45 and it is probably legit the legitimate set. I bought this set on Wish for about $16 and I will include links to both in the description below so you guys can decide for yourselves. When I first got this set, it had a really really strong odor, like anything I would have bought off of AliExpress, for example. I've never encountered that odor with Wish Art Supplies, although I assume they're kind of coming from similar sources. I mean, it was really gross. I let it air out for several days open like this. So I think now we're finally ready to take a look at it. All of my half pans are still wrapped and their travel brush is actually a very interesting style of travel brush. I haven't encountered this style where you screw the handle on the back and it gives you a full size handle and it's almost, excuse me, it's almost seamless. So, um, I don't know. I was kind of impressed by that. I'm not sure if this is the travel brush that's included in the normal Pabio set. It sure looks like it on Amazon though. And to be honest, Amazon, that could be, I've had some, some knockoffs from Amazon as well when it comes to art supplies. So just do your research, be careful. And if it performs the same way and you're paying less, I don't know, decide for yourself how you feel about that. So I'm not gonna force you guys to watch me I don't know if I'll be able to even get any of them out. They're kind of tight in. There we go. I'm not going to force you guys to watch me unwrap all of these on camera, but I will do one for sort of demonstration. These are shrink wrapped. A little bit tricky. And they're going to make a lot of garbage. I think that's my least favorite part of watercolor reviews. It's just like the piles of watercolor wrapper garbage I get. All right, and then very similar to the Paul Rubens watercolors we looked at, they have like a sticker going around the top. And that'll take, I'm sure honestly, I'm meant to cut the top off and leave the information. That makes sense. These were made in China by Pabio and www.pabio.com. Let's take a look at that. I went to the French site. Let's see what we get. No, it looks pretty, pretty legitimate in French, taking some time to load. I don't know. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the sticker on and I'm gonna use an X-Acto blade or some other sort of knife just to cut the tops off. So what I'm going to try to do, I do like that the light fastness information is on the side and the color number is on the side. Try to slice it around the pan. We'll see how well I do. And then try to peel it off because, yes. All right, there we go. And then you could probably peel the rest of the sticker off if you wanted to. The experience I'd had with the Paul Rubens was that the top of the sticker wasn't actually sticky because I found myself putting uh, double stick tape to get it to stick to the palette. Now, 
these are actually really hard to pull out. And this is not my favorite configuration for watercolors. Oh, I see, it's got like a little zipper. This one has like a little zipper on the back like the Windsor Newton half pans. It's still really hard though to get open. If you have arthritis or smaller hands or whatever, if there's a reason you're watching this and you're like, that, that would be kind of hard for me, then it's probably kind of hard for you. And there are other watercolor sets that are a little easier to get going. So I'm going to spare you guys the torture of watching me un unpackage, derobe 22 watercolors. But I'll check in with you guys when we do the uh, swatching. I've noticed that these half pans are kind of sticky and kind of gummy already. So they're not as dehydrated as some of the other half pans I've had experience with. They're certainly not as dehydrated as say the Jane Davenport or the Prima marketing <laughs> half pans where they're so dried out. They're like chunky and kind of uh, gravelly. And they're still a little moist compared to like the Windsor & Newton semi-moist half pans. So I don't know if this means they're gonna reactivate quicker or if they're gonna turn gummy or what. I'm kind of interested in seeing how they differ from some of the other half pans I've tested here on the channel. So less than halfway through unboxing these, unwrapping these, I can't get them out. And I have fingernails and I'm using them and I can't get them out. And uh, I guess the trick would be to pull all of them out, but I don't wanna lose the order that they're in. So these are already pretty, pretty frustrating to use. And they've also got some interesting Amazon reviews. Poor quality, worse than kids paint. I am now the owner of an expensive round tin I might be able to repurpose, might. It's not great quality either, sad. Unless you're buying this, and then another one. Unless you're buying this item for a child, don't waste your money. Pigments are very weak. Give me a sec, let me open this. Pigments are very weak and have no saturation power. The best thing about this uh, item is I now own a $29 palette of which I will pop the pigment blocks out and fill with higher with a higher grade of watercolor paint. That's actually not a bad idea, but yeah, 30 bucks is like way too much to spend to do that. I do that with dollar store things. Uh, <laughs> I like the idea of a smaller, more compact palette for easy carrying with several color choices but they should just sell the pans empty <laughs> so artists can fill with their own liquid pigments. I would have returned it, but it would have cost me $5.95. Very disappointed in this purchase. Buyer beware. Poor paint quality. This French brand name paint is not made in France, but in China. Quality is kids paint, not even student quality. I mean, Amazon, Amazon's got some spicy reviews for this. That's okay. I bought this on Wish. I probably still would have ordered it. I'd ordered it using some of the money from my Patreon. So I told y'all I use the Patreon to pay for art supplies, guest posts. And if I need to buy new, like, like if I'm at, if my sketchbook for, for these reviews runs out, I buy new ones with that money. Oh, gross. These are very sticky. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it left paper on. How am I gonna remove that? These half pants are like the stickiest half pants I've ever encountered. Ugh, gross. And then, thank you for your warnings. My father has a very old set of Pabio, of 12 Pabio aquarelles, which are beautiful, obviously made, in, obviously made in France before the Chinese manufacturing deal. I was about to purchase the 24 set, but will now look elsewhere. Oh, and then we've got one person who wants to argue, A plus. To everyone who says this sucks, it's great. Buy it if you're just starting off, but if you wanna get serious with art, get something else. I do know, however, a professional artist who uses this. Okay, are you the professional artist? Is that, I mean, I'm not, that's not like a slam, but like, you know how people will do who be like, I have a friend, when really they mean themselves. <laughs> I have a friend who uses this, so I, I, if I'm buying for myself and not to review for this channel, I will usually read like three sites worth of reviews. I'll check wet canvas because nice watercolors, it can get really pricey. And if you're looking to completely redo your whole system, it can get even pricier than that. So, but 
since I was looking this up anyway to give you guys a price, and they say 30, and these are 45 looking at it right now. I wonder if they got it off of Wish. <laughs> and are leaving an Amazon review. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it might help somebody, especially considering they're more expensive on Amazon than they are on Wish. Oh, you see me struggling with this? Like there's some of these, I'm just not gonna be able to, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them out at all. So that's already, and then I can't, normally what I would do is I would remove this. You know what, let's try doing it that way. Move this and then pop them out from behind because this doesn't wanna go anywhere. And because it's full of half pans, it doesn't want to... Come on. <laughs> They're going to all pop out and go everywhere. And then I'm going to spend all day looking for them. Ah, oh, got it. With only, you know, minimal poppage. All right, hopefully that's the end of my Pabio drama. And I'll zoom out actually so you guys can see. Like I've already got like a little pile This is something I really hate about unboxing and swatching watercolors is like, it generates a lot of trash. And then people are like, your desk is so messy. And it's like, ah, I know, I'm not happy with it. But it happens. So move that out of the way and I'll finish unwrapping these. So I'm finally on my last one. And I wanted to ask you guys a legitimate question you guys should answer in the comments below and I'm gonna read them. First off, how many of you guys actually go on Wish to buy art supplies? They're not a sponsor. I don't have any affiliation. I've just seen a lot of videos, including my own, where people talk about Wish art supplies. And I'm wondering who's the actual audience. So if you do buy art supplies from Wish or you've browsed Wish for art supplies, let me know in the comments below. Two, um, what, are you, what, what are you buying them for? Are you buying them for a project or are you buying them to review? Are you buying them for something for YouTube? Let me know that as well because I don't know. I just really wonder who the target demographic is and because like Wish has like that long string of keywords, right? So it's like watercolor, water, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, art, art supplies, etc. right? It never mentions the product's name, like Pabio or the Paul Rubens watercolors that I just reviewed. Um, so it's, it's weird, like if you were, and oh, and when I try to search those brand names, nothing comes up, so or nothing related to the product comes up. So I'm really wondering who the target audience is. Is it just people looking for super cheap art supply? Super cheap, not all of them are super cheap. Um, or is it people who are buying for their YouTube channels? or what. So uh, let me know what your use case is in the comments below if you're comfortable sharing with that. I used to buy stuff on AliExpress sometimes and really it was for purposes of review so I could see if it was worth it but I could also let other people know if it was worth it because buying duplicates of things I already own is too expensive if it's just benefiting me. It has to benefit other people as well. So let me know. I would really appreciate your feedback. It would help me out a lot. Um, and I'm just curious, I'm a nosy person. So next we're gonna start swatching and I'm gonna get rid of all this garbage. First thing I wanna do is I wanna take a waterproof, this'll work, this is a Pentel pigment brush pen, so it's gonna be waterproof when dry. I'm gonna take a waterproof pen and do a couple opacity test lines at the top and at the bottom and I'm probably gonna run out of space because I ran out of space when doing the Paul Rubens test. And I'm gonna give those about five to 10 minutes to cure. All right, so we have our probably goat hair brush. And actually doing the reading, it would make sense that since these are made in China, no longer made in France, they would include goat hair since that's a little bit more of what people traditionally painted with than um, other types of fiber. So I am gonna try with the goat hair it would not be what I would normally grab. I usually grab a synthetic for these sort of tests just because it's a little stiffer. You can get more of the pigment. And Amazon has led me to believe that these are terrible and not very pigmented at all. So we will just have to see, right? And we have 24 of them. So I'm gonna be working my way through the color spectrum. And I'm actually trying to pick up enough color that it would be worth my while. They don't actually seem that bad. I've definitely, now if I was expecting like 
Snellier, Windsor Newton, Daniel Smith quality, like I think some of the reviewers are expecting that, you know, I would be very disappointed with this, but I didn't pay those prices either. So I'm not necessarily disappointed. I'm not really anything yet. Ooh, that's a nice opera pink at least. I always love the opera pinks. I mean, for the 16 something I paid on Wish, they're not bad at all. If I'd paid $45, I might start being disappointed. But I also did that Lucas Pocket set, which I paid about $20 for, for 12. And I was pretty disappointed in those. Rather, they swatched really good. And then during the field test, I became increasingly disappointed. So that could be the case with these. I, I could lose all faith in these. That's why we do the field test, because swatching isn't really, isn't really enough. And for me, doing a field test puts it through all the paces, you know, glazing and washes, layering, reworkability, rewetting which I could just do. Oh, that green is gonna be, it's actually better than I thought. I think it's meant to be a Viridian. It's very chalky for a Viridian. And with this set, I cut off and threw away all of the, I wonder if Paul Rubens is manufacturing these since there were a lot of similarities or if that's just kind of standard for Chinese watercolors. Again, like I said in the Paul Rubens video, I realized that a lot of the watercolors I use and review on this channel have probably been manufactured in China, but I assume it's to uh, specific brand certification. So I, it doesn't really bother me where it's manufactured. Although as an American citizen who works in the US, I would, you know, I would rather support American made art supplies um, which is kind of just Daniel Smith in terms of watercolor. There's some individuals who make watercolors like Antithes Arts, which I've also reviewed. Wow, I magically managed to fit, or I will have managed to fit every single color on here. But given that the pickings are kind of slim and can be expensive for beginners, I definitely do still look elsewhere for my watercolors. And my main set has a lot of Windsor Newton, which is made in, supposedly made in Britain. Okay, so I'm gonna let these dry and check in with you guys. They're not as bad as I expect. Like, like Amazon reviews really had me believing that these were gonna be horrendous. So they're not as bad as I expected. So all of our swatches have dried. They're a little bit dull, but they're not any more dull than any student grade watercolor. So I've got a fresh pad of paper here. I'm just gonna do a little bit of color mixing, color play and I'll save sort of the real, oh, I'm not even using the brush that came with it, some of the real watercolor for the field test, but I did wanna sort of get a feel for these watercolors before I sign myself up for something really involved. This will kind of determine whether or not I do a small, like a four by six or a three by four field test, or if I do something larger. So I'm mostly just doing sort of wet into wet color play right now. And then once this dries or at least dries somewhat, I'm gonna go in and do some layering, some glazing kind of stuff, wet over dry. Wet, the colors are really pretty though. So this would be something that would be really impressive maybe for like a, an Insta artist who isn't showing the finished work and doesn't mind their stuff going up wet. Like some of the brushed letters I see on Instagram, I can, they're using like the artist loft watercolors. I can tell they're working, they're, they're posting pictures of their stuff while it's still wet because having worked with the artist loft watercolors that they're using, I can tell you they're not very good. These actually kind of remind me of the Johnny Q watercolors I got from Amazon that I reviewed for you guys a while back. Those are also made in China and there's just a high degree of optical brighteners in those. These are slightly less muddy than that. Actually some of that color blend right there is really nice but they're still because they get chalky as soon as I wet them there's still a lot of optical brighteners so they look really impressive when wet and they look decently impressive in the pans and then you go to paint with them and you're kind of just disappointed by the end result. So I was actually gonna let it dry, but why not do some 
more wet into wet. All right, so now I'll let it dry. So I think you guys can probably see a marked difference from just a second ago when this was wet to now when it's had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and just try doing various things on top of it. Try to get the colors to smear. It's only had like 10 minutes to dry, so it's probably not fully dry. The paper underneath is still a little bit warped. It's still a little wet. Um, so that can also make a difference in liftability. Sometimes watercolors that are still wet are a little more prone to lifting. I'm trying to put down like a heavy mark of color and I'm having difficulty getting any sort of saturation on top of this lower layer of color, which would make it difficult to do detailed things. The ones that lift up the best seem to be the blue so far. And I'm just kind of working my way around the color wheel trying to test sort of one of every family sort of thing. I am making a huge mess, flinging painty water everywhere. But yeah, unfortunately, I'm kind of having trouble picking up enough saturation here. I'm going for, for like the sort of saturation I do when I'm painting the last layer on Kara's hair. So full saturation, detail saturation, but I'm trying to do it for a larger area of color. But it's even hard to see where I've put down my prior layer, I feel like, because it gets very desaturated and kind of chalky as it dries. I feel like this merits a four by six rather than a nice big five by seven or larger because I have a feeling this is gonna be very frustrating for me. Frustrating is good. I've learned a lot dealing with uh, misbehaving watercolors. They're not what I grab when I grab something for seven inch Kara, but uh, learning to problem solve for troublesome watercolors has definitely made me a stronger watercolor artist because it's given me a larger skill set of ways to solve problems. Now I think I finally managed to get some colors fully activated. So I'm gonna let this second layer dry and then do a third layer. All right, layer number two has had plenty of time to dry. You guys, I'm sure you can tell the colors look kind of muted, kind of faded. That's not my camera. That's how they actually look on the paper. It's like they're chalk paints. Ranger, Tim Holtz made a really big deal about like the oxidizing chalk paints they're doing. And that seems really cool. That's on purpose. This isn't on purpose. It would be neat to see watercolors that kind of had that effect and it wasn't like detrimental to the paints. Like it'd be neat to see that effect done on purpose and with like explanations of how to use it to the best effect. But unfortunately, that's just how these behave. And they really remind me of that Jerry Q set I re reviewed. So like, if, you, if you're watching this and you're like, well, this doesn't bother me, or I like that effect, or sorry, or I really want cheap watercolors. Okay, I feel you. Um, get the Jerry Q set, don't get the set. Jerry Q set is cheaper. You can get it over on Amazon. It's not necessarily better. It's just the same results in a cheaper product. You can probably even find it on Wish if you really, really wanna go the Wish route. This said, I'm not getting, yes I am. I am getting some lift up, Never mind. I can like, and to be fair, like with any watercolors, if you scrub enough, you're gonna scrub them off the paper, unless they're stain, uh, yeah, staining watercolors. And all of these have a little bit of granulation to them and granulating colors tend not to be staining colors. Mostly because the, and this is me hazarding a guess based on what I know about these sort of watercolors. Um, I think it's because the pigment size is too big to really seep into the paper, so it just sits on the surface of the paper. Whereas with staining colors, the particle size is very small and can actually seep into the paper fibers. I'm also noticing that in order to get any sort of intense color, I really have to kind of scrape at my pans, which is kind of in keeping with what the Amazon review said about these not having a good pigment load and being full of, of filler. And optical brighteners like chalk, like talc, like we talked about earlier in the video, 
those uh, tend to take up a lot of bulk in watercolors and they tend to be used as kind of a filling agent, right? So you're gonna use a lot just to get a little bit of a result. So really economically, if you plan on watercoloring, you wanna do it a lot or you wanna do it for the long run or you want your paints to last a long time, cheap watercolors are not your friend because you're gonna use up a lot to do very little. So thank you guys so much for watching the unbox and swatch of the Pabio watercolors. These were ordered from Wish. I paid around $16 for them. You can find them on Amazon for around $45. Uh, if you're interested in these watercolors, I hope you guys will stick around this channel and check out the field test video that I have coming up in the future. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if, if you're still on the market for quality watercolors, why don't you check out some of them some of my other reviews in my watercolor playlist. If you guys are looking for tips, tricks, and tutorials, head on over to natasoup.blogspot.com for loads of great information. And if you just enjoy watercolor art, why don't you head on over to my beautiful watercolor webcomic, 7 Inch Kara, which you can find at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.